So it's kind of taken for granted that museums are collecting organizations, that they collect things. Sometimes those are physical things, sometimes they're ideas. Uh, but we collect them and we want to preserve them and we want to be able to tell people about them. And that, that interpretive mandate um, kind of implies knowledge creation or at least supporting the creation of knowledge. Um, so the, there has also been a history that museums are places of scholarship uh, and creating new knowledge in and of themselves. That's very r rarely extended um, to the information sciences. So it's more typical that museums are uh, in, in history, through art history, uh, or uh, regional history, the, the sciences directly through chemistry and uh, a variety of other disciplines. Uh, but very few museums are s studying information science and applying that to um, museological, uh, historical issues, um, in our case, uh, art history and analysis and critique. Um, so we, we decided that that was a core strength of ours and that it was uh, an opportunity to be able to contribute new scholarship in information science. Um, I think it's not that much of a stretch to, to say that there are a lot of museums who are capable of doing that work. And, uh, and there are a variety of conferences where uh, the information sciences are well represented in museums. Um, but for an, an organization to take an explicit stance that aside from the application of technology to the problem in museums, we would also conduct primary research uh, around information. But that was a little bit different. Um, so I think the other thing that we tried to do that was very successful in Indianapolis had to do with um, really emphasizing uh, collaboration and service to the field, um, which is important um, as a medium-sized museum, we're not a we're a large museum in some ways, but really in the scheme of things, we're a medium-sized regional museum in Indianapolis, and there's uh, thousands of museums that are exactly the same way. Um, there's no reason why we needed a particular competitive advantage over any other cultural organization. So the advantages of scale and collaboration across the field were really important to us and really drove a lot of success. Uh, it, it meant that we had access to really talented and amazing professionals who could bring ideas from a different context uh, that would improve uh, not only the efforts for the Indianapolis Museum, but also uh, for lots of museums. Um, so that was very compelling. Um, especially in the technology areas, very few of us, uh, we don't work in museums to make money, we don't work in museums uh, to, for, for fame and glory, but uh, you know, most, especially in the technology areas, we wanna be able to do something that matters. I don't think that's unique to tech, um, but um, it's, it's maybe a little more uh, prevalent there, so the ability to do some work that extended beyond just our local need was fulfilling from a, an intrinsic perspective for us. So particularly in information sciences, the critique of museums is that uh, we kind of sit back on our laurels and wait for the innovation to come to us and then we are always reactive. Uh, and so especially maybe five years ago, um, museums were uh, simply picking up tools designed for other disciplines and shoehorning them into our own. Uh, now that's really started to change where museums are uh, understanding their own process better and able to have bespoke solutions that can be applied uh, 
in our particular discipline. Um, and that's, that's different. So research in information science allows the museum to get out ahead of where consumer culture is to say that more than what is simply available off the shelf, we understand enough about our own working needs and models that we can create specific innovation targeted uh, tightly around the things that we want to achieve as museums.